Hey guys, this is test 49, game 2. This is the housemates with mail game. It's an assignment or matching game because we're taking the five pieces of mail, F, L, M, P, S, and assigning them to the housemates, G, J, and R. Now for this setup, I've chosen to make the housemates the base, G, J, R, and assign the pieces of mail to them rather than the other way around. The rules were kind of equally weighted in terms of which way to do it, and I just had to pick something. So I picked to make G, J, the R the base here. Now I've made two main diagrams, I'll get to the bottom one later, ignore that for now. Just focus on the top one. They tell us that neither L nor M goes to G, so I put not L and not M under G. They tell us if the letter goes to Rini, the postcard goes to Jana, so we can diagram that as being L, R, then P, J. Letter goes to Rini, then postcard goes to Jana. Then they tell us that the person who gets the, the flyer gets something else as well, so we can put down F and then leave space below it in a box indicating that F is going with something else in vertically in the same column here. So we can make two different main diagrams here based upon the placement of the letter because the letter is involved in that it cannot go with G and therefore it must go with either J or R. We also know about the letter given this conditional rule right here. So if L goes to J versus if L goes to R. Now if L goes to R we know that P goes to J and since M cannot go on G, due to that rule right there, M will go to either J or R. So two different possibilities there, but pretty limited. Then we have only S and F remaining for the bottom diagram. And we know, of course, that F is never alone. So if G got F, he would have to get S as well, or he could just get S by itself. So either way, G is definitely getting S and then all we have left to deal with here is F, and F could of course go to any three of the people, G, J, or R. Now in the top diagram, where the letter goes to Jana, things are a bit more open-ended. I mean, we know that M cannot go to G, of course, so M will go to either J or to R, but we've still got F, P, and S left to place, and they're pretty open-ended. We know that George has to get one of the three, but other than that, we really can't say much. So this right here, is essentially our initial setup for the game. Now question number eight is a typical orientation question. You just want to take one rule at a time and apply that rule to all five choices looking for violations. So for example, we know that G cannot have either L or M. So scan through the choices looking for violations there. You find that choice C violates this where G has M, so that one is eliminated. Next, you could look for the rule that if the letter goes to Rini, then the postcard goes to Jenna. Scanning through the choices there, let's see where, where Rini got the letter. We see that in choice D. Rini got the letter, yet Jana did not get the postcard, so for that reason, choice D can be eliminated. Next, we can look for F being with at least one other piece of mail. We In choice E, we see F alone, unacceptable, so that's gone. We're down to A and B, and both of those look pretty good until you realize that choice A is missing the postcard altogether unacceptable, therefore B is our, limit, our answer for number 8. Next, number 9, what could be the only thing ever addressed to Janet? So, I mean, we know in the top diagram that would be L, in the bottom diagram it would be P, so L and P could be each the only thing addressed to Janet, so choice B is our answer for number 9. Next, number 10, what cannot be a good list of things addressed to Janet? So this is kind of like a partial orientation question. Now, as we just established, Jana must always have either L or P at a minim minimum, and then maybe other things too. So any choice here not mentioning at least one of L or P is invalid. So if you scan through A, B, and C all mention L, B mentions P also, and then D mentions P also, but E mentions either, therefore E is impossible because, as we said, Jana must always get at least one of L or P. Next, number 11. What can't be a complete accurate list of things addressed to R? Now we know that R will have to have L in the bottom diagram, and then in the top diagram, if she doesn't get L, she will have to get M, or maybe she'll get P, or maybe she'll get F. Now we know that if R gets L, then G has to have S. So for that reason, if Rini's getting the letter, we know that she cannot get the survey also. So for that reason, if you, if you start off with looking at B and C, you see letter for Rini, 
that activates this conditional right here. Rini gets the letter, George gets S, which is the survey, therefore Rini can never ever get both the letter and the survey. So choice B is our answer for number 11. Then if we look at the remaining choices, I mean choice C, we clearly see that Rini could get both L and M, and then F, P, and S would go on the other slots. So for that reason, C is gone. If you look at A, M and P, that could occur in the top diagram. If you look at D, F and M also could occur in the top. And then if you look at E, F, you know, F and L, that could happen in the bottom. She could get F and L here, and then M, P, S go in the other slot. So E is gone as well, leaving B. Next, number 12, if M and S both went to the same person. So that's never happening in the bottom diagram where George got S and M was therefore on J or R. It would happen in the top diagram. So, for example, we could put M and S on Rini, getting rid of M as a possibility for Jana. Then we've got F and P remaining. So, you know, either, you know, George gets P alone or he gets P and F. So F is basically a free agent and could go to any of G, J, or R for all we know right now. They're just asking us what could be true, and this is one possibility. We'll see if we get any hits. Could G get S? Didn't see it. P get, no, R get P didn't happen. J get M didn't happen. R getting L didn't happen. But then E, J getting F, F could go anywhere. So yes, F could go to J, and we're good with choice E.